his time, this man was a master of diplomacy and political strategy. But the pharaoh Ramses II earned his place in the history books as the most prodigious architect of Egyptian antiquity. His 66-year rule over Egypt came to be seen by later generations as a golden age. In the whole 4,000-year history of the pharaohs, only one of these god kings reigned for longer than Ramses II. The lifeblood of the land they ruled over was the sacred Nile River. Its regular flooding allowed tall palms and green gardens to flourish along its length. Human settlement was confined to the Nile's fertile floodplain, and beyond the reach of its life-giving water, an inhospitable desert began. Three thousand years ago, the gateway to trade with Africa was here in Nubia, in what's now southern Egypt. Great quarries and mines supplied stone and gold in abundance for richly decorated buildings. It was here, on the upper reaches of the Nile, that Ramses II built his divine temples. great temples of Abu Simbel. According to Egyptian mythology, the sun god Re himself made a ladder for the pharaoh to enter the inner temple using the rays of the rising sun. Here we're in the world beyond, ruled by the god Osiris, judge of the dead and ruler of the underworld. When Ramses enters the temple, he enters the world of the dead. And every day as the sun rises, it's Osiris who brings the pharaoh back to life, rejuvenated again. Like a guard of honor, eight-meter-tall supporting pillars lead to the inner recesses of the temple. Each is a figure of the god Osiris, but with the face of Ramses II. In the innermost sanctuary, four statues are carved into the rock. They are the creator gods, Re Herakte, Ptah, and Amon Re. And with them, the god king himself, Ramses II. King Ramses II lived 13 centuries before Christ. During his long reign, he altered already existing temples, founded a new capital city, and covered the whole of Egypt with huge stone figures and obelisks and vast temple complexes. Here in the king's mortuary temple, the Ramazeum, in the ancient town of Thebes, lies the head of one such statue. Originally 17 meters tall, the figure would have weighed a thousand tons. By the second year of his reign, Ramses II was already adding to the great temple of Ammon in Luxor. He built this 15-meter-tall obelisk adorning the entrance. The king was obviously aware of the superhuman efforts he was demanding from his workers. He paid tribute to them in these words. You, my workers, chosen for your strength and the skill of your hands, building monuments for me in great numbers, skilled in working with precious stones. You know the types of granite. You know the secrets of sandstone. O oh, hard-working and faithful builders, I shall live as long as the monuments you raise. Ramses commissioned a huge pillared hall to be added to the great temple of Ammon. 
It's sometimes named as one of the seven wonders of the world. The hall is the size of a small football pitch and contains a forest of 134 highly decorated sandstone columns. Again and again, this cartouche appears, carved into the stone. It bears the hieroglyph for the pharaoh's name. Ramses had the cartouche carved on all his works. It reads, Usermat Re Setepen Re Miamun, which means the one chosen by the god Re. Ramses' rule extended over the civilized world, over Upper and Lower Egypt, that is. The world for him was firmly centered in Egypt, its vast deserts and the fertile Nile Valley. pharaohs went to war regularly to defend their trade routes and, more importantly, their land and people. One battle is commemorated on the temple walls at Abu Simbel. It's the Battle of Kadesh against the Hittites early in the king's reign. Ramses had himself portrayed in the reliefs as a brave warrior and daring military leader. An inscription on the wall proclaims the pharaoh's courage and fame, and bears witness to the cowardice of his own troops. Today's historians say the evidence on the Battle of Kaddish is conflicting. Inscriptions left by the Hittites present them as the victors. Ramses turned all Egypt into a monument to his own creativity. The Abu Simbel temples were far larger and more significant than any cliff temples he or his predecessors had yet built. Using the simplest of bronze and stone tools to open the rock face, the workers cut 60 meters back into the cliffs, working in teams of 100 men each. As the space inside grew, a system of polished bronze mirrors was installed. In the dim light they gave, artists decorated the inner walls with reliefs and painted figures. Three thousand three hundred years later, a multitude of workers descended on the Nubian desert once more. At the beginning of the 1960s, the temples were under threat from the building of the Aswan High Dam, which would leave them submerged in a reservoir. So the whole complex was relocated, in a UNESCO initiative which proved to be one of the biggest construction projects of modern times. 20,000 tons of stone was sawn into blocks, taken apart, and later put back together. In March 1968, after four years' work, the relocation of the temple was finally complete. For Ramses, Abu Simbel was a residence for all eternity, a residence for his family as well as himself. Ramses even built a separate temple for Nefertari, one of his wives. Although smaller than the main one, it was built in a similar style. Thank you. 
At the main temple, four colossal statues portray the father of the family, watching proudly over the other figures and reliefs carved into the stone. Much like a family photo, his wife and children are shown beside him, carved as small figures at his feet. The king's firstborn son, Amun Her Chopchev, is portrayed here between the legs of the larger statue. And at the feet of the Colossus on the left stand three of his daughters. Ramses II must be one of history's most fertile leaders. The names of 40 daughters and 45 sons are recorded. To build monument on monument is a wonderful thing, two wonderful things at once. His own words best show us Ramses II, the prodigious builder of Egyptian antiquity. Here in the Nubian desert, not far from Abu Simbel, the pharaoh had seven more large cliff temples built. Sadly, few have survived. In 1224 BC, King Ramses II's long life came to an end. He was one of the most important pharaohs, and his passing marked the end of a golden age for Egypt.